Okay, in this video, I'm going to talk about how to start um, the first layer of our painting, the Imprimatura, for the academic method classical style painting. So we're going to be practicing this first with um, a photograph uh, that's uploaded onto the side of a bottle and a pair. It's very simple, very basic. Uh, we're going to do this a couple of times with different images, and then we're going to get right to our, our painting using the technique. So you can see that what I have here is some burnt sienna squeezed out. And as, as I explained in the course notes, the imprimatura really refers to just staining the ground, um, but we're using the term to refer to the entire first stage of the painting. So what does staining the ground mean? Well, the ground technically is this. It's the surface that you're working on. And to stain it, what you're going to do is you're going to take some uh, burnt sienna, you're going to put it on there, and you're just going to spread it out. And you're going to cover the whole canvas with it. And this, and I'm putting lots of terpenoid, or if you're using acrylic, you're going to be using water. And if you're using acrylic, you want to go very, very fast, because as you know, it dries very fast. And I'm using a large brush just to kind of spread it all out. And the advantage of a ground is that we can manipulate it and make it light and make it dark when we draw on it. Okay, so that would be the stage we'd call staining the ground. And then we would draw on top of that with paint. So we get uh, paint with less terpenoids. So you can see we, we can get lines like this. And then we can even take a rag and kind of wipe things away. So the ground allows us to manipulate uh, the lights and the darks. For what we're doing, what we're going to use the Imprimatura concept for is to just do the first layer of the painting. So let me just pull that little bit of hair there, take that off. So put it on. Don't get too fastidious with it, trying to make it super, super neat and smooth, because you're going to mess it up anyway. So once you've got your, your ground, and the other function of the ground from a psychological point of view is it gets paint onto the canvas. It's no longer white, and it's no longer just freaking you out. So once you've got some color, you've broken the ice, you're in there, and now we're going to start to draw with our brush. So if you look at the image, we're going to have a bottle on this side, and just kind of estimate, you know, the shape. Don't try and get too detailed with it yet. So there's going to be the top of my bottle, the shoulders of the bottle. It's good to have sort of a middle line running down the, of your picture. And then you're, you're not going to get too detailed. And this mine's a little bit wet and runny, so I'm just going to just take some of this off. And I can just wipe that off. Okay, then I can come back in with some thicker paint and say, okay, here's where I'm gonna have my shape. Here's my middle line. It's really important to have this kind of middle axis. And then just put it in here and blend it out. But don't get too neurotic about details. Then you've got a, a line that cuts through the bottom and it's going up at a slight angle. Okay, so just kind of mark that angle. And now we have the pair. We know that the pair is going to be somewhere over here. So a couple of things. We can check the proportions of the bottle. Now, the proportion, if you remember from the sighting technique, the width goes into the height. Um, I don't remember what it was, but I can go back to the picture. I could measure the width of the picture. Then when I go into the height, I'm, I'm measuring right now with a picture on the wall one two, three, just less than four. So I come over here, I'm now get establishing the width of the bottle. That's what this is. I turn it this way, one, two, three, four. So a little bit higher maybe. So I'm probably gonna shrink my bottle at some point, but I'm gonna leave it like that for now. Okay, make it a little bit wider on the base. Now the pair, if we come to the pair, what about the gap between the pair on the bottle. You can cite that distance also and compare it to something else. It happens to be just a little bit less than the width of the bottle. So I can come in with the width of my bottle, come over here and say, okay, that's going to be the width of my bottle. So I'm going to put my pair about here. So there's going to be the base of my pair and I'm going to have the top of my pair coming up here. So notice that I'm just very roughly putting my drawing in. I'm not trying to be too, uh, perfect at this point. I know that the pair, if I tripled it, is the height of the bottle, so I can double check. I take the, my pair, I put that at the top, my finger at the bottom, that's one, that's two, and that's three, and that's pretty accurate. Okay, so I'm getting 
there to there is accurate. I'm looking at the bottom of the bottle here and I'm coming across and what part of the pair do I hit? Kind of in the wide part of the pair. So that looks a bit good. And so once I've got this done, now I can start to sort of manipulate a little bit of my picture. So my background is gonna be light. So I'm gonna take this out just by rubbing it. Now, if you're working with acrylics, you're not gonna be able to do this. Don't worry about it. You don't have to do this. We're gonna do all of the tonal development with the second stage of our painting. But if you're working with oils, um, because they're so forgiving, you're able to do things like this. So now I'm just cleaning up my edges. And then I can come back into my bottle. Um, notice that there is a line here. This line is the uh, blue ground reflected through the brown bottle, but notice that it doesn't go straight through like that. In the picture, what glass does is it distorts it. It'll bend it and it'll break it. So it doesn't go from here, it stops, up, starts up here, and then it's gonna have its own kind of break and curve. And that's gonna be relatively dark. So I'm just gonna put that in. And then when I look at my bottle, I've got all sorts of other darks. So I'm not gonna make the bottle too dark because I want it to be kind of light down here. So I'll just kind of put that in. Maybe come in with my cloth and wipe it. Make sure you've got a curve at the bottom. It's not totally straight. So if you've looked at the video on geometric shapes, you'll take note of that. All right. So here, this is really all you're gonna be doing at this first stage of the drawing is you're just laying it in, making sure things are straight, things are vertical. Um, things are in proportion. All right. And then you could take this into more details, but I would say for what we're doing, don't. All right. Don't get too, too. Don't put highlights in. Don't use white. Don't use anything like that. Keep everything just very simple uh, with this paint. Uh, what I'm going to do now is work on some of the shadows. So I'm going to just take away the edge. And I notice that really the edge is light compared to this. So this should be the dark part. I'm going to kind of spread this around. This just establishes the general tonality of the picture, that the pair is, you know, on the left side of the pair, it's lighter than the, the ground. But you don't want to get too carried away. We're not getting too fussy. And then I can come in with some shadows. I know there's a shadow that goes up here, but Really for that, I would just say, leave the shadows out. All right, let's just get our basic shapes in. So then what you wanna do is you wanna come back and check everything. Are your proportions right, um, et cetera? Because what you don't wanna be doing when you're doing the rest of the painting is fiddling with the proportions. Is your bottle completely straight? And you can hold your brush there in the middle and I can say, all right, well, I could come out just a little bit more in the bottom here. Yeah. There's that. I can come back and check my proportions. Now that I have cleaner lines, there's gonna be one measurement for the width. I can go like this, one, two, three, four. So it's probably a little bit tall. I can go back and check my bottle. Maybe when I did the original measurements, I was a bit off. Yeah, it's gonna be a little bit shorter. Than that, so I'm just going to take the top off just a little bit. Just get it wet. And do that. Now, there's lots more to do, obviously, but that's the point. We're going to stop. Okay, now that it's dry just a little bit, um, it's not so wet and messy. I can come in and sort of make a few adjustments. So if I look at the picture over there, I'm gonna just extend this a little bit more and just shave off a little bit of the shoulder there. Just bring that in. Then do the same thing on the other side. Now normally I would rotate the canvas the other way around just so I could get to this, but I'll do it kind of backwards a little bit and then I'll so you can see all I have now is just turpenoid on my brush and then I can come in and 
kind of curve that and give that put that curve back. So I just wanted to shave off a little bit there. And then I can start to sort of build up some of the value here on my bottle. Again, we're not going to go too detailed. But we're just going to kind of tweak things a little bit. And if I look at this as maybe a little bit strong of an angle, I'll drop this side down a little bit. Drop that so that I have a nice kind of line here. Okay, keep that up nice and high. I'm going to move my pair over. I'm going to just try and get my side of the bottle so I can see where I am by taking some of this paint off. There's my width. Remember, it's just a little bit less. If I measure that again, feeling like it's a little bit too much. So I'm going to just bring in the side of the pair here. Bring in the top of the pair there. Smooth that out. And then just bring out this side of the pair here. So I have to hide this, I don't want a big line, so I'll take this side of it out and do that. Here I can erase. And you see, even when your paint dries just a little bit, you can still activate it by getting it um, more terpenoid on it. You can't really do that with acrylics, unfortunately. So then we're gonna clean up the side of the pair here. And then on the pair, like I said, we could do all of this with the, the black and the white, the grisaille phase, which we'll do next. But it's okay to sort of you know, practice this, play, you know, just make some tones, make some values, use your rag, bring the rag in just to, to wipe away. Just so you can practice and get a sense of, you know, how all of these things work. Come back to my bottle. I gotta just gonna change my brush. And don't get too detailed, like if you look at the bottle, there's a reflection here. You don't need to worry about that. Just get the basics. Squint your eyes. If you see it with your eyes squinted, that means it's kind of important. We'll keep it in there. Just kind of smooth that out. Come back in. Top of the neck has a little bit of darks. Like I said, don't do the, uh, the reflections, the highlights. Just give the top a little bit of a shape. Get more of a curve there and that should do it that's it for today um, it looks pretty rough but that's okay what we all we want to make sure at this stage is that we've got your basic values dark light light dark and that we have the proportions okay so remember with geometric objects the center line is really important Okay, you can just put it in roughly. It helps you see symmetry. You can also flip it upside down and look at it. You want the gaps between things. You want relationships. You know, do they all measure up? That's what you want to do at this stage. In the grisaille stage, we're going to get for the lights and darks um, and make the values work. And then we're going to go for the color stage. And at those two stages, we do not want to be changing proportions and drawing and things like that. All right, so give it your best shot. Um, post this up on the wall. We'll have a quick look at them uh, and then we'll take it into uh, next week where we work on the grisaille phase.